Today, I'm gonna to be going over this, the controller briefly mentioned in my ergonomics video to let you know how I can call up to 5,000 images in an hour. And I'll even go over some tips on how you can further speed up your calling with or without it. Real quick though, I'll try to keep this video brief, but check these timestamps if you need to jump around as I'm gonna go over the controller, how I use it for calling, and then jump into general calling tips. All set, let's jump in. So for a couple seasons now, I've been outsource editing weddings for a number of photographers, as well as some studios in the area. And that can sometimes entail fully processing upwards of eight to 10,000 images a day. And while in my ergonomics video, I briefly mentioned how I've always had an interest in optimizations in good posture, there's actually a third factor in getting where I am now, namely my lifelong love of gaming. And that is where we arrive at the DualShock 4 controller. For any non-gamers, the DualShock 4 or DS4 is merely the fourth iteration of controllers for the PlayStation line of video game consoles. And partnered with a fantastic piece of software known as DS4 Windows, or maybe an app called Enjoyable on Mac, I don't use Mac, can't help you. I'm able to do anything keyboards can do and more, allowing me to start to finish a call without ever having to take my hands off of it. Quick caveat, you can technically achieve this workflow with a keyboard, but first, it'll be slower. And second, it'll be nowhere near as ergonomic on the wrists. And if you want a tight budget and we're just looking to get your wrists in a better position for the call only, you might even be able to get away with an uber cheap USB controller like this one, which is currently $10 and then use a piece of software like Anti-Micro to program the few buttons used in a calling workflow. Your mileage will vary, and the deeper editing functions that save me hours upon hours will still require a more robust and compatible software. Caveat over. Now, as I just mentioned, only a fraction of this controller is actually used specifically in my calling process with 95% being simply the one and two rating and a little bit of left and right to compare shots and maybe some zooming to check focus if possible. In my next video, we will take a deeper look at exactly how I use the rest of the controller to rip through some of my edit flows as well. But today we are focusing on the universal trudge that is the call. This is uh, from a trip that I took to Peru with some friends, Chad Wu and Rob Hall. Shout out to uh, at Chad Wu and at Rob Hall photo. So just as an example, what you can see here is we have left and right for jumping back and forth. You know, we can hop around, we can hit triangle to zoom to check focus. And then most importantly, we can use this button here and this button here, the L1 and R1 triggers to rate. And so now we can kind of just hop through and see, you know, how quickly we can, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. And so we're hopping here and we can see pretty similar shots. This one doesn't have a camera in it, but focus is pretty damn good on this one. So we're gonna, yes, no, no, no. We're just gonna be picky here. No, no, yes, no, 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 no. We're just looking for some hot shots right now. And you know, we're hopping through and oh, we can actually jump back real quick and see, oh, this is an excellent shot of Rob wearing a hat like a normal human person. So we will keep that one. Yeah. And so on and honestly i mean this can't be too exciting but just to give you that very brief rundown of exactly how simple this is that now i can just sit here and fly through and the only thing that slows me down is the fact that it takes a little bit longer to generate these previews just because my computer is running a couple of recording softwares at once here otherwise ideally this would be absolutely as fast as i could you know, process it with my mind. And we can end here on a very charming picture of a Chadwick Wu and his new Peruvian pup buddy. All right, with that example out of the way, let's go over a few tips to help speed up your calling workflow outside of this controller. And I'll try to keep these a little bit rapid fire to avoid another long ass video. Firstly, the most effective way to speed up your calling time is also the same advice I give for keeping your hard drives lean. And that is to stop overshooting. Now, plenty of photographers shoot an appropriate amount, but I can tell you as somebody who has spent years calling 6,000 shot weddings down to 600 images, plenty of us straight up shoot just way too much. Just so much, just too many pictures, and I'm already getting worked up just thinking about it, and I've just decided that I'm gonna make a whole separate video on this topic. Moving on. Tip number two is to look through the lens of your client. They don't see the surrounding images, and so your threshold for quality when comparing two images is astronomically higher. Number three is a partner tip for that, and that is to be mindful of and respect the shooting flow. 
So for instance, if you're like me and you shoot a small series of two to three images for any expected moment, like a cake cutting kiss or like a posed action from your model, then you understand that the subsequent images are safety shots. And if composition and focus check out on the first one, be ready to instantly drop the subsequent save shots. But take that mindset to your shoots as well and be aware of the little things that you might be doing mid shoot that are adding to your culling and editing time. Number four is a very quick one. I'm sure everybody knows it, but it needs to be said. Use caps lock to enable Lightroom's auto advance feature, which will reduce your inputs when culling by technically half, right? Does the math check out on that? Rob, let me know in the comments if my math checks out. Is that half as many inputs? Number five, if possible, access your images on a fast non-boot hard drive like an internal SSD. And what that means is to have your images on a drive that isn't your operating systems drive, but is still a fast drive. So if you have an external drive, the likelihood that it's fast is probably bottlenecked by the USB connection. So still preferably an internal device. Number six is potentially another obvious one, but render your previews on import. Most often when I see people complaining about Lightroom being slow, it is either a bad setup with their computer hardware or they simply leave preview rendering for when they are working in this catalog and flipping around and doing their calling. Offload all that work into your import actions and have that gallery ready to fly when you're ready to call. And before I let you go, a sort of bonus tip. Did you know that Lightroom renders a preview of every preset that you have for every image in your catalog? Something to think about if you have a lot of presets installed. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, hitting both the sub button and the bell icon means we can keep this good thing going. Be sure to check the preceding ergonomics video that I'd mentioned and stay tuned for an even deeper dive on how this controller edits catalogs as well. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.